For all the gamers, including me hoping that Days Gone would receive a sequel on PS5, a recent report about Ben Studio is proving to be disappointing. Days Gone launched back in 2019, and while the game did not prove to be as popular with critics as other PlayStation exclusives, it still has a loyal following of fans. Unfortunately, Days Gone seems like it will be a one-and-done game despite Ben Studio pushing for a follow-up. A recent report from Bloomberg's Jason Schreier revealed that Ben Studio met with Sony about a potential Days Gone 2 back in 2019 after it had released. However, the idea was shot down, with Ben Studio being moved to a different project instead. While this will surely disappoint some fans due to the recent resurgence in Days Gone's popularity, Schreier highlighted the legitimate reasons that Sony supposedly provided for shooting down another game in that world. Per the report, Days Gone's mixed review scores played a role, which is understandable considering how well other PlayStation-exclusive games perform critically. Another factor was Days Gone's troubled development, something that had been discussed heavily in the lead-up to release. With Sony wanting to avoid another troublesome development period while also maintaining its reputation as a publisher that puts out critically acclaimed AAA games, its apparent refusal of more Days Gone content is reasonable, but not acceptable. Following the news breaking in yesterday's report from Bloomberg, gamer director Jeff Ross went on a spree on Twitter liking a variety of Days Gone-related posts. These posts included news regarding Days Gone 2 not moving forward, fans sharing support to Ross and Ben Studio, jokes at the expense of Sony and Days Gone, and more. As the video game community is wont to do, it began to speculate based on Ross' Twitter behavior. Ross has since commented, trying to head off any rumors. According to Ross, his Twitter activity was just intended to be a message of appreciation. Ross appears to just be saying that he's thankful for everyone talking about Days Gone, whether it's at kindness, good humor, or what have you. Further, Ross clarifies that he's making no actual comment on the situation at hand. He's neither confirming nor denying the truth of the report, heading off anyone's assumption that his likes might contribute to the veracity of Days Gone 2 not being greenlight. Despite Ross clarifying comments on Twitter, the replies to his post definitely have a mournful tone to them. There are lots of fans saying how much they enjoyed Days Gone, or telling Ross how much Days Gone meant to them. There are also lots of posts encouraging Ross, saying how much they're looking forward to his and Ben Studios' next game. With a few days now gone after the initial reports, details surrounding the pitch have started to come to light. In fact, Days Gone director Jeff Ross was on David Jaffe's YouTube podcast where he revealed as much as he could about the ideas the studio had for a potential sequel. Arguably, the biggest piece of the pitch was adding a co-op element, something Ben Studio wanted to originally add to the first game. The idea was cut early in development however, though with eyes on a sequel, the studio again wanted to make sure it was implemented. In fact, alongside the co-op element, Ben Studio also aimed to make Days Gone 2 into a shared universe experience. Ross describes it as a way for players to take the world they've built and repurpose it for some sort of similarly themed multiplayer version. Ideas included people like Deacon trying to survive in this hostile world, building bases and structures, forming into groups, and working together to overcome enemies and obstacles. It's worth noting that Ross no longer works at Ben Studio, though he confirms that leaving the company had nothing to do with the sequel or what the studio was working on. However, his openness regarding the what-ifs of the project suggests that the game isn't likely being developed, at least not in the form described. Ross remains unable to confirm or deny whether or not a new game is in development and doesn't appear to be interested in being the official source considering neither Sony or Bend have commented to date. Following the disappointing Days Gone news, Ben Studio was supposedly tasked with working on a brand new Uncharted game while simultaneously assisting with a multiplayer Naughty Dog project. It's been more than four years since Naughty Dog closed Nathan Drake's chapter in Uncharted 4 A Thief's End and fans have been craving for the next main entry in the Uncharted series ever since. While there have been plenty of rumors floating about Sony's San Diego studio working on the next Uncharted game, none of them have been confirmed so far until today. Sony's San Diego studio's new team has been shrouded in mystery ever since the rumors of a new Uncharted game started floating on the internet. Sony hasn't officially acknowledged the existence of this new team yet however, 
eagle-eyed fans were quick to notice the LinkedIn profile of the former PlayStation studio head, Michael Mumbauer, who worked as the studio head with a new team based in San Diego. This new team was apparently working on a brand new AAA action-adventure game, something that sounds vaguely similar to Uncharted. Interestingly, a new report from Bloomberg's Jason Schreier suggests that the San Diego studio was working on The Last of Us remake, whereas Sony Ben Studio was working on a brand new Uncharted game under Naughty Dog's supervision. Unfortunately, it seems some of the lead staff members were unhappy with this new direction Ben Studio was headed towards and parted ways. According to Schreier, Ben's developers feared they might be absorbed into Naughty Dog, and the studio's leadership asked to be taken off the Uncharted project. Fans who were worried about a new Uncharted being developed by some other studio other than Naughty Dog should be at ease however, Schreier's statement over on Twitter makes the future of this next Uncharted game quite uncertain. If Schreier's statement above is anything to go by, the next Uncharted game might not be in development anymore. Meanwhile, there are plenty of rumors that suggest that Naughty Dog's next game is a new IP codenamed Stray Cross, making it all the more questionable whether Naughty Dog would be able to toggle three projects, including The Last of Us 2 multiplayer, if at all. As for Sony Bend, the studio is most notably known for developing 2019's Days Gone, but has previously worked on Uncharted, Golden Abyss, a PS Vita spin-off of the Uncharted series. With a notable experience working on the Uncharted franchise, Ben Studio seems like a perfect fit to take the series forward. However, given the success the studio has found with Days Gone, it isn't surprising that it would want to work on a sequel or an entirely new IP of its own. Unlike other major first-party releases such as God of War or The Last of Us 2, Days Gone isn't a critically acclaimed title. While the game has found a resounding fan base over the course of years, who still plays the game and shares screenshots taken via the game's incredible photo mode on social media, it's possible that it did meet Sony's expectations, but not at a higher level. Uncharted's future seems cloudy for the time being. But given Sony's commitment to delivering blockbuster first-party games that would be both a commercial and critical success, it's highly unlikely that the company would abandon one of its biggest franchises just like that. At least in terms of first-party games, Sony has been on top of its game with PlayStation. Throughout the last generation, the PS4 saw a slew of impressive titles from storied developers like Naughty Dog, Santa Monica Studio, Sucker Punch and Guerrilla Games. Whether it was iterating on an already successful IP like God of War and The Last of Us, or endeavoring into new franchises like Marvel's Spider-Man, Horizon Zero Dawn and Ghost of Tsushima, the PS4 had a wealth of exclusive offerings to play. Not much is changing with the PS5 either, as emphasized by the already released Demon's Souls remake and upcoming exclusives like Returnal and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. However, evidently this focus on generation-defining AAA games generally only benefits these aforementioned big studios. According to a report by Bloomberg, it seems the smaller development teams and studios for PlayStation are effectively being hung out to dry or neglected by Sony because of these heavy-hitting franchises. While there are many other Sony-owned development studios in charge of smaller-scale projects, it seems the company has expressed its desire to strictly focus most of its resources and attention towards these larger studios and games. It's undeniable how successful these larger projects have become, but it may not be a long-term benefit. In a vacuum, betting on studios like Naughty Dog or Santa Monica Studio makes a lot of sense. These studios and development teams were capable of putting out some of the best generation-defining games, as evidenced by review scores and commercial reception. Horizon Zero Dawn and The Last of Us Part II were not cult classics, they were blockbuster video games. Without the alleged context of Bloomberg's report, Sony could presumably do no wrong by backing and supporting some of the biggest AAA game development studios in the whole industry. However, that focus on the biggest game studios comes seemingly at the expense of smaller teams with big ideas. Sony's Visual Arts Service Group team, led by Michael Mumbauer, are presumably one of many smaller development efforts that may not receive the same attention as the larger AAA game developers do. Development teams, like Mumbauer's, are disbanding, studios are being shifted to back up these larger developers, and Sony's internal strategy is apparently changing drastically to meet this new demand. Sony's entire video game business strategy seems to be focusing westward, 
in an attempt to recreate the success of titles like Marvel's Spider-Man and God of War in the US, while smaller development efforts, especially in Japan, are being downsized or refocused. The news unfolds after Visual Arts Service Group, which was founded in 2007 and recruited around 30 developers to work in partnership with Sony, felt the tech conglomerate were not able to give the team the support or funding it needed and instead seemed to barely acknowledge Visual Arts Service's existence. With the group disbanding, a complex hierarchy that exists in Sony is being highlighted, with the company putting more focus into its bigger studios, such as Naughty Dog, with whom Sony have a better chance of regaining return on investments with. This leaves its more independent arm at a bit of a loss, with some indie studios experiencing high turnovers. Just last week, Sony made some changes in offices in Japan, which forced some developers out with the company saying it no longer wants to work on smaller games, or games that are only successful in Japan. This shift into a focus on bigger, more successful game franchises not only affects indie studios who are seemingly being pushed out, but may also have an impact on game choices for customers overall. The likes of Gravity Rush and Days Gone have been successful hits, but if Sony does turn away from independent studios with independent IPs, this will likely reduce the choice for players. It's also been noted that companies which neglect smaller games may even be doing themselves a disservice in the long run. Some indie games, such as Minecraft although it's not associated with Sony, go on to become huge successes. This also means that studios looking to pitch new ideas may be hesitant to propose a game from scratch that has no financial certainty. Instead, some may opt to pitch remakes instead, such as Mumbauer, who recently approached Sony with the idea of developing a The Last of Us remake, before the project was taken from them and handed to the game's original team Naughty Dog instead. But on the other hand we have new PS5 games coming from smaller studios such as such as Kina Bridge of Spirits, Saifu, Solar Ash, etc. But I don't understand why Sony is not supporting some of the small-scale studios and their IPs or this report is just a testament to the mentality of fans. Speaking of the The Last of Us, is a remake of The Last of Us really necessary? Naughty Dog was already a well-respected developer in the industry even before it released The Last of Us to the masses. The game was an instant hit and took the gaming scene by storm in 2013, which was then followed up by The Last of Us 2, another critical darling in its own right that won several Game of the Year awards. Aside from the rumored multiplayer component for The Last of Us 2, the future of the franchise remains a mystery as to what will come next. While a third mainline installment would be the most natural expectation from fans, many were recently shocked by a recent report regarding the status of the franchise. Supposedly, rather than placing the focus on going forward, there are plans to go back and fully remake The Last of Us from the ground up for the PlayStation 5. The story is a strange one, both in terms of the game's apparent inception, as well as the fact it would be happening at all. Many have been swift to defend both sides of the debate over whether a relatively new game should even be remade at all, with decent arguments for both points of view. Video games being remade is not a new concept, with many classic titles receiving the treatment in recent years. Final Fantasy VII Remake is a stellar reimagining of a beloved classic, but most importantly, ironed out any kinks and issues still present in the original. The advantage that a remake has over the original is always the benefit of hindsight. The developer behind the project now has the capacity to go back and review what worked and what didn't in order to make the proper adjustments for a more polished experience. However, it should be noted that the original FF7 released in 1997, while TLOU was 2013. While The Last of Us is not dated by any means, there are ways it can still benefit from a PS5 upgrade. The first and most obvious would be a big jump in graphical fidelity thanks to the specs inside the PlayStation 5. Demon's Souls alone already teased the potential for next-gen visuals, and that too was a remake, so it would be exciting to see the iconic moments in The Last of Us giving a fresh coat of paint. Additional improvements can be made as overall improvements and brought in line with many TLOU2 mechanics, such as its combat, exploration, and puzzle solving. Although the story was unanimously praised, there have been those to dismiss these aforementioned elements in the first game, feeling them to be too straightforward compared to other offerings on the market. 
A final point would be that a remake of The Last of Us would be a much easier project for Naughty Dog to tackle next, as opposed to a full-blown third installment. This would help familiarize the company with the hardware inside the PS5 for future projects, as well as giving them a bit of a break after the strenuous production of The Last of Us 2. That said, it should be noted the development of it thus far has been reportedly rocky, and there's been many hands in the honey pot in terms of goal, purpose, and faces. On the flip side of the coin, there are arguable reasons that a remake of The Last of Us seems a bit redundant at this point in time. As of now, the original title is barely eight years old, and with only one sequel released, it seems counterproductive to revisit the first instead of focusing on a potential third game. Although graphics have definitely improved since its release, even the original PlayStation 3 version of The Last of Us doesn't look nor play bad by any means. Simply put, it seems like it would benefit Naughty Dog, the PlayStation 5 library, and gamers as a whole to place resources in a proper third game instead of a retread of the first which is still perfectly fine the way it is. Furthermore, the game has already received a similar treatment on the PlayStation 4 with The Last of Us Remastered, an updated port, that is fully playable on the PS5 as is. It remains to be seen what is truly going on behind the scenes, but Naughty Dog's time and resources may be better served elsewhere. I personally think that a Last of Us remake is unnecessary, and it looks good already. It would be good to see a Days Gone sequel and a sequel to The Last of Us, and a new Uncharted game, in my opinion however. Okay then, moving forward we have to discuss about the rumored collaboration of Hideo Kojima with Xbox. Before jumping into that discussion, I want to share you some other Hideo Kojima-related news, as Dutch developer Blue Box Game Studios moves to dispel rumors that its upcoming PS5 exclusive Abandoned is a secret Hideo Kojima project. When Blue Box Game Studios' upcoming cinematic survival sim Abandoned was announced as a PS5 exclusive in a recent PlayStation blog post, the gaming community was a little suspicious. While it's not unusual for Sony's blog to promote upcoming titles like Abandoned for the system, the decision to do so for a game that's being developed by a relatively unknown indie studio from the Netherlands seemed to some like an incredibly strange one indeed. Much like the name of its upcoming title, the studio's social media accounts had been abandoned for almost half a decade and its website made no reference to the game either. What's more, the studio has no prior experience working on a game of this magnitude, which led many to wonder whether Blue Box was simply a mask behind which another developer was hiding. Having done something similar with Moby Dick Studio in the build-up to Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain's release, and with rumors that a new Kojima Productions project announcement is imminent, Hideo Kojima was high on the list of suspects. Following intense speculation, the team over at Blue Box Game Studios have now released an official statement on its site to distance themselves from the rumors. The response makes it clear that the studio has no association whatsoever with Kojima Productions, and that Abandoned is a passion project being worked on exclusively by members of the Blue Box team. The news comes on the same day that VentureBeat journalist Jeffrey Grubb revealed that Hideo Kojima is in talks with Xbox to publish his next game, something that came partly in response to the rumors about Abandoned being a secret Kojima title. This isn't the first time that Grubb has hinted at a potential partnership between Microsoft and Kojima either, having previously suggested this could be a possibility following comments made by Phil Spencer at the beginning of last month. While Grubb stopped short of confirming that a deal has been struck, he seems fairly confident that talks have at least taken place. While controversial, Kojima Productions' debut title Death Stranding was able to not only recoup development costs, but turn a profit for the studio which would explain why Microsoft might be keen to strike an exclusivity deal for the studio's sophomore title. Despite having launched on the PS4 six months prior, Death Stranding's PC launch was hugely successful, and the game has generated millions of dollars in sales since going live on Steam last July. Whether Kojima's next project will be a direct sequel to Death Stranding, or a brand new IP remains to be seen though, as too does the console that it will be available on. Now jumping into the main discussion, Hideo Kojima is considered by many to be one of the greatest visionaries in gaming. Best known for the hugely successful Metal Gear franchise, his games have sold more than 60 million copies worldwide, 
and have typically performed strongly with reviewers and critics. As a result, the console on which his next project will be available is something of a hot topic right now, with many believing that Microsoft is in pole position to publish the next Kojima game for its Xbox consoles. This speculation has largely been sparked by recent comments made by VentureBeat journalist Jeff Grubb and Microsoft's executive vice president of gaming and head of Xbox, Phil Spencer. While a Hideo Kojima game on Xbox is certainly a possibility, though, it now seems like a partnership with the American company may not have been the Kojima's first choice, at least if the co-founder of Xbox era Nick Baker is to be believed anyway. While speaking on the most recent edition of the Xbox era podcast, Baker, who uses the Twitter handle at special underscore ed, revealed that he has known that Kojima's next title wouldn't be coming to the PS5 since June of last year. As the discussion progressed, he elaborated further on this, stating that he was under the impression that Kojima had taken the project to Sony first, but had ultimately been knocked back by the Japanese company. He later mentions that Sony Interactive Entertainment CEO Jim Ryan may have been the one who passed on a deal, although has since walked this back, clarifying that Ryan likely wasn't the who had the final say on the matter. While this would be a shocking turn of events for Kojima Productions, it does not seem impossible. The game could benefit from Game Pass as well as funding from Microsoft, and Kojima could take full advantage. However, there is one big downside that could be seen if Kojima leaves the PlayStation brand behind. If there is one clear advantage that the PS5 has over the Xbox Series X, it is the DualSense controller, and seeing someone as clever as Kojima being unable to make use of it would be a shame. Even with older controllers, Hideo Kojima has shown extreme levels of creativity. A clear example of this can be seen in the iconic encounter with Psycho Mantis from the original Metal Gear Solid, as one of the methods for defeating the foe was directly tied to controllers. Back before controllers were wireless, gamers had to have them connected to one of the console's ports at all times. With Psycho Mantis being a mind reader, Kojima designed his abilities around reading controller inputs. As such, he countered everything the player did, with the eventual solution seeing fans unplugging their controller and putting it into the second port. This genius fourth wall break was mentioned inside Metal Gear Solid 4, though this time, Kojima's strategy for surprising Metal Gear Solid fans was different. During the Screaming Mantis battle, Psycho Mantis appears, wowing players once again with his craftiness. Directly asking those on the other side of the screen to place the DualShock 3 on the floor, the character made each end of the controller vibrate to essentially have the controller walk towards the screen. A mind-blowing moment with a hidden variant for players not using a controller with vibration functionality, the sequence is a highlight of Metal Gear Solid 4. Clearly, Kojima has a knack for making good use of a console's controller in his games, and it would be amazing to see what he could do with the DualSense technology. Adaptive triggers would be a great way for Kojima to add weight to certain moments, while haptic feedback would surely be used in a creative way. While developers have shown the strengths of the DualSense via gunfire, different floor textures, and other small tricks, a creative mind like Kojima could surely take things further. Having the touchpad available is yet another benefit. With Hideo Kojima's next project rumored to be horror-related, DualSense could have been even more impactful. Feeling each footstep as some kind of monstrosity searches for a player could have been horrifying, while the haptic feedback could simulate heavy breathing or a heartbeat as well. Adaptive triggers could add tension to gunfights or weight to melee weapon swings, while more creative uses could see them no longer resisting once an enemy is strangled. With Kojima surely able to think of something more off the wall to do with the controller too, not seeing it used would be a shame. While there is nothing inherently wrong with the Xbox Series X controller, it is largely the same as the one seen for the Xbox One. As such, it lacks the more intriguing features of the DualSense, limiting those making games for the platform when it comes to controller-based creativity. While Kojima Productions working on something new for Xbox fans is exciting, especially if it is horror-related, it is hard not to think about the lack of the DualSense controller becoming a downside. While the game would surely still be great, it might just let longtime Kojima fans down in terms of its controller tricks. Whether or not there is any truth to this is difficult to say and, due to the delicate nature of video game publishing deals, will likely never be officially confirmed.
It would, however, line up with some of the other rumors that have cropped up in recent months, like Kojima pitching the project to Google for the company's Stadia platform before entering into discussions with Microsoft. The latter would also line up with suggestions that Microsoft may be targeting influential Japanese game developers with a view to increasing its presence in the East. Why exactly Sony would turn down the opportunity to publish another Kojima game is unclear, although many will likely speculate that it has something to do with the commercial performance of Death Stranding. Despite the game's successful PC launch, the PS4 version of the game failed to set charts alight when it launched in late 2019. It debuted at number 7 in the NPD Group's list of the 20 best-selling games for November before falling out of the chart completely the following month, sparking rumors that Sony was unhappy with Death Stranding sales. The possibility of this happening makes sense seemingly because Kojima Productions is an independent game developing company. Furthermore, Kojima has shown interest in game subscription services like Xbox Game Pass and believes that streaming is the future of games. If Kojima strikes a deal with Xbox, his next game will be available to 18 plus million subscribers of Game Pass at an instant, as well as available to stream on mobile devices via xCloud. For what it's worth, Fans might not have to wait much longer as Kojima Productions' next game could be announced soon. With Sony seemingly moving away from investing in smaller titles that involve more risk to focus on curating its existing popular franchises, such a deal makes even more sense. It's no surprise that Death Stranding wasn't as big of a commercial hit as Sony's other AAA titles like God of War or Marvel's Spider-Man. For Kojima to continue making innovative experiences that alter the mere definition of video games, Xbox and Xbox Game Pass seems like an ideal fit at this point in time. But for me only an Xbox exclusive is an issue, it can available for multiple platforms and I am pretty happy for Kojima and Xbox to do a collaboration, that only time will tell. And that's all for the video guys, like and share the video for a bigger audience, comment your thoughts on the topics discussed. Subscribe if you are new and click the bell icon, and until then from SMPV it's goodbye.